A question recently came up on our forum asking a little bit about Renaissance music, and I thought, duh, I have played so much of this in my life, and it is beautiful. It has very uh, distinctive characteristics. This is a tune called Kemp's Jig that was played commonly by lutenists at the time in the this is really late Renaissance. Uh, Will Kemp was a, an actor, Shakespearean actor, in the late 16th century, 1590s, around, around that time, following in the heels of a famous comic actor named Richard, Richard Tarleton. And a lot of pieces were written about these guys. John Dowland had a piece called Tarleton's Resurrection. This is a piece called Kemp's Jig. I probably already mentioned that. Named after Will Kemp. And uh, it is a, a great example of a simple little melody and something that was very common to do in Renaissance music was have a four or eight measure phrase and then a variation on the phrase called a division. It's exactly what happens here. In the first, first four measures we have this melody. Now the next four are a little more uh, embellished. So that would be the A section and the, the division of A. And the second section is twice as long, it's eight measures long, and we've got a little melody on D, the, a similar melody down a whole step on C, and that's, that's a very common thing in Renaissance pieces, is to have them not follow strict major or minor rules. We have a little melody there that's happening in D, and all of a sudden the same melody, or the equivalent melody, happens on C, a whole step lower. So major and minor keys were not as well established then, and things tended to be a little bit more modal, meaning play, playing using different modes. In this case, we're in the key of D, going to C really gives us a uh, a Mixolydian or even a Dorian sound because of a few extra notes that are happening that are that are that happen in that little in that so it has changed modes or textures right there really common in Renaissance stuff what we're going to do in this lesson is learn it from tablature with only a PDF no guitar profile on this because I want you to read the tablature and listen to what you just heard. Now, I want to take a uh, little side trip, hopefully it'll be interesting, because Renaissance music was originally written in tablature for the lute. This is a book I have, I used to play the lute, I still have a, a lute or two, and Renaissance music was written in tablature where that can look pretty scary. I don't know how, how well you can see this right there, but I'll hold it up. And um, using letters, typically, depending on which country we're talking about, using letters to stand for the numbers of the frets. So it had, similar to our tablature nowadays, using six lines, each line standing for a string, but instead of using the numbers zero through the highest note in this is five, fifth fret, um, instead of using numbers zero through five, they would use the letters A for zero, B, C, D, E, and F for the fifth. So, um, so that's what that was. I'll, uh, I'll maybe I'll try to uh, put in a few attachments or something so you can see what this looks like in in or something like this. Anyway, um, again, this piece is from very late Renaissance, but it's a great example of a simple little melody with a simple little bass line. To what else was going on during the Renaissance was the development of counterpoint, the ideas of playing more than one melody at a time. So the bass part has its own little melody. <laughs> instead of just that would be the way we might just strum this and sing it. In any case, um, the technique that we're going to be using, we'll talk about this a little bit more, we'll take a closer look at what's going on, but pretty much standard kind of finger picking technique, except that in Renaissance music there were a lot of scales. And you would get used to alternating your right hand fingers, just really just using two fingers, your middle and your index, kind of walking through the scales. So a very useful technique to practice along these lines first would be playing even like a, a D scale. Now I went all the way from D up to A, so I did an octave and a half, 
in that case, and I was just alternating my right hand fingers, my index and middle finger, usually starting with the middle finger on the beat, and the index finger on the and. So that's the way most of these little runs would work. Left hand technique is going to be pretty much classical guitar technique. Good hand position down here, and being able to keep your fingers close to the frets. Okay, let's uh, break down some of the uh, more distinctive elements that are happening in Kemp's jig. As is important in any kind of instrumental playing, actually in any kind of playing, left hand technique is um, it has to be very precise in a song like this because, and this is just general classical technique, you need to be able to have clean notes happening on multiple strings, frequently strings right next to each other at the same time. So you need to play in good left hand position with your thumb down low on the neck, leaving space at the bottom of the neck, not touching it with the palm of your hand, like that. Now this song is in the key of D, which means there are very few notes at the first fret. F wouldn't be in the key of D, A sharp wouldn't be, D sharp wouldn't, G sharp wouldn't, C wouldn't, and F wouldn't. So it's very common to play a song in the key of D in second position with your hand ready to play notes at, from the second to the fifth frets. And we are going to use this fifth fret in here. We're going to be hitting some A's. So keeping your, your, hand down, your thumb down low on the back of the neck and having your fingers spread out ready to play some things like this. A good exercise to do this is get in good hand position and just play the notes, chromatic notes, on the E string. Do them on all the strings. And notice, only my fingers are really moving. So as we play the melody to Kemp's jig, most of the time we're going to be playing in, in the second position. We're going to need a bar. You can play the bass part just like we played the melody part and hear that as its own thing. Second line is the same. Then we have two measures of D, half notes and then a whole note. Two measures of C, although a couple bass notes at the end of the second measure of C. And the next line is pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. 